everybody, Carol Davis here with a spot of sunshine. And I'm in my car again. Thank God that I can broadcast from anywhere except when I'm actually driving. I stopped my car. I am in a parking lot. And I might get to do this again tomorrow. Come to you from a parking lot at my car in a parking lot. So, um, today I'm going to read about the attic. If you remember last week, maybe not, I talked about the attic. See, A T T O. You maybe can't see it. See all the stuff up there? Remember the attic in your grandmother's uh, house and trunks and just the, the junk the junk room it's in the attic. And that's what I call my subconscious. So I have to say, when I want to work on what's the garbage that's blocking me from my highest good, it's in the attic. I say, I gotta go sort out the attic now. I'm gonna go clean out the attic. And, um, so that A-T-T-I-C, the attic, isn't that fun? Subconscious. I thought it up by myself. Okay, ready? The attic. All the old ideas I have carried with me since birth are stored in my subconscious mind, the place I call my attic. Stored in our attics is all we have learned throughout our lives and mostly what we learned during our first few years on this planet. This is what continues to direct our actions and reactions to everything. What a powerhouse your attic is. Most of us have no idea that it is the fuel for the engine that spins our minds and directs our actions and reactions, right? The information stored in our attics adds instruction and direction every day to what we are reading or seen or being told. Additionally, some of the old stored ideas are added to any current instructions we give. Illustrate this. Give someone 15 seconds to completely fill in an outline in a child's coloring book. Chances are they cannot complete the task. Why? Because their subconscious mind added the instruction from deep within. But don't color outside the lines. I didn't say that. You didn't say that when you told them to completely color it in, right? See, it's tricky. Think about that one. Play this over again. So, the message is, clean out the attic. This is not a project most of us look forward to. Most of us don't know exactly what is in our attics or our subconscious minds. We don't know. Exploring inside can be fun, exhausting, painful, scary, or dismal. And it is definitely not an overnight task. I put it off for a long time, for several years, actually after I knew I needed to do it. Still the circles keep turning. Change this change. Now I'm gonna talk more as I go along about how to clean out your addict. But, um, and why it's like, Think of your grandma's attic, you know, the way, way, way back in the back of the attic where those dirty old dusty trunks, remember those old shipping trunks? Maybe you're all too young to have seen a shipping trunk. It's a huge metal trunk with locks. It's metal, it's heavy, it's big, especially when you fill it up with clothes. And those were shipping, those were what people used to travel across the ocean on those big liners and they would put these uh, these trunks, that's how they'd carry their stuff across the ocean. Maybe you see old pictures from the 1800s and 1900s, people with all those, their trunks on the on the docks. So, um, anyways, I'll deal with that more. I want to just touch briefly on the cycles of life, the cycles of life. I'm watching the clock because I will have to go. This is, see the picture, cycles of life. The amount of time it takes to sort through all that junk stored in the attic depends a bit on where we are in the circle of our life. See what we start at birth? Nobody's looking in the attic. We're child, teen, young, mid-adult, elderly, death. So at any time in this life cycle, there's something for me to learn. But when we're children and even when we're teenagers, we don't know we're learning because I remember when I was a teen, I, I knew more than I ever knew my whole life, even now when I was 16. I knew everything. I knew parents were stupid, adults pretty much. And I knew everything. And now I'm 75 and I know nothing. That's how it goes. We start going backwards. So, um, oh yeah, 
anyways, regardless of our place on the life cycle, which I just showed you, that's easy. We can begin the healing process by writing down the name of the... Oh, I love this. This is a way to start cleaning your addict, okay? That's easy. Because you know how you ever love to talk about other people? But it's really hard to look at yourself. This, this helps. This is the trick. So we go, begin the healing process by writing down the name of the person, place, or thing we first come across in the attic. Chronological order has no significance. I want to, that's like, I, I'm in the attic and I, and I come across a person I can't stand, makes me crazy. Or I hate them. Or whatever. So I write them down. I start writing about them. Whoever, whatever, when I relax and say, okay, I'm looking in the attic. Whatever comes to mind first. It might be a person, it might be a place, it might be an old job. It might be anything. Let's start writing it. I want to say a little more about why we need to spend time in the attic. When we are there, we start through every single thing we see and carefully delve into each one. We assess each discovery for its value or contribution to our lives, and if there is none, we toss it. There's a very important reason to be on this reconnaissance. A reconnaissance is a mission to obtain information by visual observation or other detection methods about the activities and resources of an enemy or potential enemy. And guess what? The enemy or potential enemy lives within us. It's the crazy stuff that drives us. You may have heard, we are our own worst enemies. There you have it. To deal with our baggage, we need to know what's going on through the screening. We do the baggage screening. And that's what we're gonna talk about tomorrow. Today, I have to go now. But I will see you tomorrow for baggage screening. Oh, I'm so excited. That's, that's fun too. Thank you. Bye.